Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we have another installment of Hot Takes, where I went online and asked for your hot takes about anything EDM related, so let's hear them. Less popular artists are basically always better than mainstream popular artists. Uh, yeah, straight up. I just wanted to start with this one because this is honestly a pretty cold take, and one that I hope a lot of people do recognize, um, that the less popular artists are pretty much always going to be better. I would say 95% of the time, uh, just because they have more room to innovate. They have more room to be created. They have more room to be themselves, where as soon as you hit any real success, you have a ton of people that have a certain expectation for your sound or style. And um, even you, you have an expectation now where if you're if you're often a smaller artist, you don't uh, like you don't, often don't make a living, I think, out of uh, out of music. But if you're a bigger one, you that is your living. And so uh, you need to make stuff that is going to get plays and get streams. And so the the reason, the why behind why you make music changes. And that's why I think um, more often than not, the less popular artists are, uh, are generally better. Okay, this is a similar one here. Uh, not sure if I'm alone on this, but the more popular a music label is, the quality of the actual song goes down. There's reasons why I don't listen to NCS and I listen to Monster Cat. Uh, I, Monster Cat is like, one of the biggest labels in the EDM world. I hope you, like, my, NCS isn't that big. If you're just going off YouTube plays, um, no. Uh, I, I, th I found some graph earlier at some point. I think I'll show it up here. I think Monster Cat's like the fourth biggest, like, EDM label or dance label out there. Uh, and NCS isn't even on the thing. They're just grouped in with the other independent labels. So uh, Monster Cat is just uh, way bigger. I think early Space Laces made better electronic music than early Skrillex. This is a fascinating one for a couple reasons. Um, one is that early Space Laces is kind of like harder to find nowadays. It's not as easy to go back and, and find as as simplistically as it is uh, for like a Skrillex um, because a lot of Space Laces was just like big mixes. It wasn't really albums or EPs and um, I guess there were singles and stuff, but it wasn't really like a, uh, yeah, it wasn't like a super easily accessible discography where Skrillex obviously is a pretty big discography. And um Early Skrillex is like great, but it's not like the greatest thing ever. I think his early dubstep stuff was, he was obviously pioneered the space and was a huge influence on the dubstep scene. Um, but his stuff wasn't like overly complex because he was like the, the front facing man of the genre. And so I think as the front facing man, similar to what we've talked about here, um, you're, you're kind of, you have a certain expectation to uphold, uh, which is ironic because he kind of blew away the expectations for the regular listeners. But um, yeah, so I, I don't think he, I, I think this makes a lot of sense um, because Space Laces, it was able to like, be a little bit more underground and experiment a little bit more and be a little bit more, um, yeah, just creative with the sound. Not to say Skrillex wasn't, but um, Skrillex definitely had more of a, of a reputation to hold. Uh, and so I get it, but also like you can't put down early Skrillex. It's just, it's still so good. I generally am not a crazy person on albums anymore and find myself enjoying the new Spotify trend of prioritizing lots of singles for an album rollout. Better yet, ditching albums entirely and releasing about six track EPs with four to five singles. I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time, actually. I don't know if you know this, but um, in my uh, business degree that I finished in 2020, um, I actually did a, a long final paper on uh, on what's called lean manufacturing in music, um, and and or I guess lean manufacturing and how it relates to music. When the idea is once something is finished, you put it out immediately. So rather than artists sitting on stuff and creating EPs and albums, as soon as it's done, you just throw it out immediately. Albums don't exist anymore. EPs don't exist anymore. You just put out music. Um, I get it from a business standpoint and I get it from popularity and stuff. I just, I love the album. I love a full project that has something to say, as has a larger meaning and larger narrative and, and larger, um, just whole, or I guess holistic, just, uh, storytelling uh, that a single can't really do by itself. And I just love it. I find myself actually recently listening to only albums straight through. I often like right now in my current listening habits, we'll listen to albums front to back. And that's what I'm primarily listening to. And I love it. And I think it's fantastic. And, but I understand the sentiment to this and, and I want to say, don't get too comfortable with that. I think the more comfortable you get with just listening to singles, um, the less you start to appreciate the overall structure of albums. Uh, and then people will want to make less albums if we don't listen to albums front to back. And we don't listen to albums the way that we have in the past. And we already are on that trend a ton, but um, I would just say be careful. If you want albums to come out at all, uh, you do need to listen through uh, albums and not just singles.
And on a similar vein, EDM has one of the worst album rollouts. Newest example of the upcoming Galantis album. 10 out of the 14 songs are already out. It takes away the joy of a new album, knowing so many songs in advance. See about a similar rollout with her album, Sad in Scandinavia. Uh, yeah, so I guess yeah, this is just a very similar vein to what we're talking about in terms of album rollout. Uh, this is one that I actually think makes more sense and I think is going to be where the trend goes for nowadays because you want that um, that all that marketing on a single track and you want that like weekly highlight on that singular track rather than um, burying like seven, eight songs on the album that don't get all the attention that you think they maybe they should. And so I think this will be more of the future. I think we're going to see a lot more of individual singles uh, come out on an album. I'm not happy with it. I don't love that trend, but I think that's the way it's going to be. And um, yeah, EDM, I think is a great example of this because uh, I, I, EDM just does it more than any other genre that I know of. Um, not a ton of other big genres, overarching genres out there, uh, do the album rollout like freaking <laughs> EDM does. Um, I think a lot of them actually are, are resorting back to like this weird, st like, I don't, I don't say weird, but like where they just released the album. Uh, Taylor Swift just did that with a 31 song album rather than having no singles come out. Um, uh, I think Kendrick did that with uh, Mr. Morale. I think uh, Billie Eilish is doing that with her new album too. Uh, I, I think it's a common, a more common trend that uh, I, I actually enjoy that a lot more. I like the the surprise, just here you go, here's a whole album. But uh, we'll see where the trends take it. But my my guess is that uh, EDM, EDM is going to see a lot more of uh, <laughs> of like... 10 out of 10 singles coming out as the album comes out. So, uh, but yeah, 99% of all EDM 10 to 15 years ago was better than 99% of all EDM now. Progressive House and Melodic Dubstep are too airy, have soft drums and lack bass. Dubstep is too rushed, harsh, and random, and other genres like D&B and techno are too minimal and generic. I generally agree. I think I agree 50% on this. I think we are out of the golden age of EDM, of dance music. I think um, the uh, mid to the early to mid 2010s was like the golden era of, of EDM music. Uh, but that's not to say the stuff isn't good now. I think I think it's a lot harder to find, I would say. I think a lot of the more commercialized stuff um, was easier to find. Good commercialized stuff was easier to find back then. Um, also, though, and a very important note is try not to look back with um, rose-tinted glass uh, and nostalgia because um, great examples. I recently went back and listened to the Zed album, the uh, the what True Colors, I think, and uh, I uh, I listened to it. And I'm like back then, I was like, this is one of my favorite albums of all time. This is so good. And I went back and I'm like. I like I have nostalgia for these songs where like this isn't like overly like a fantastic album. I'm like this. I probably wouldn't give this anything higher than like a, a seven or an eight now. Um, but uh, it's just it, it felt like in the times I don't think I don't know. I don't know if EDM maybe ages as well as some some other genres do um, just because of, of how quickly I think it evolves. And so. Yeah, I, I sort of get the sentiment here, but I also think um, don't look back without uh, take off those nostalgia glasses, too. The Mr. Brill album was an all right album. There was a ton on the album that felt like it was lacking of going anywhere outside of some all right, but a bit wacky sound design or the drop lack impact for me. Rothentic might be the only one with a good first drop that has some impact to it. I... I mean, I disagree with this. I pretty feel like wholeheartedly. I, uh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the Mr. Bill album. It's currently my number one EDM album of the year. And, uh, yeah, I just think it's great. I, I don't, I liked it a lot more than, um, fan, the Fantagasmagorical. I don't know why I said that so horribly, but, um, yeah, I, I liked it more than his album beforehand. And I just think it's a great sound. I think, um, it is wonky. It's all over the place. I think the first drop of Rothentic is one of the better sounds from the whole album. Um, but I think there's so much more that's, that's, that's fantastic on it. Um, Stutter, I think, is great. I've been jamming to that one all the time. I've been really liking Inflammable and Impeccable as well recently, too. And yeah, it's just one of those albums that I find a full listen through of the album is like really great. I really just love listening to the whole album front to back. Um, and I don't really have any skips on it. So um, I, I disagree with this one. I think lyrics need to be paid more attention to in the EDM genre. Every once in a while, I come across an EDM song that I can really dig because of the lyrics specifically. But I look at what other people are saying about the track, and all I hear is things about the production and how the vocal sounds instead of what the meaning is. Um, sure, not every artist has crywolf depth uh, verses, but not every song is a boring breakup song either. I think uh, if people give lyrics more of a chance, it would enhance their listening experience overall. I agree with this uh, quite a bit, actually, um, but I understand the sentiment of why people don't listen to um, a ton of the lyrics when it comes to EDM. 
First off, and I think it's a thing that that uh, you can't really avoid, is I think 90% of EDM listeners aren't listening for lyrics. I think that's just a thing. I think the the main drive and, and draw of listening to an EDM style sound or electronic music is the production. It, it just is. That's the nature of the genre. It's meant to be centered around the style of production and elements and sound design. It's meant to be that. And so when you throw lyrics on, I think this is why EDM struggles with lyrics a lot too, why they're so generally boring for the most part is because they kind of, it's just an afterthought. I think more often than not in the EDM world, again, just as like generally speaking, I think more often than not, um, th it's a bit of an afterthought. And I think people don't really care as much about the lyrics. And I fall into this trap all the time. Uh, when I do my uh, This Week in EDM listening, I'll, I'll listen through stuff and um, I'll sometimes like on my like second or third listen, I'll be like, oh, like the lyrics actually like are saying something here. Like I'm... I need to pay more attention to this because I, uh, I, they're actually saying something that's not just kind of nonsense um, and just meant to be there as like a, a, as a, as a, as an audible filler of sorts. So I get it. I do think we need to listen to the lyrics more. That being said, also, I think a lot of people really don't put effort into lyrics because that's not what the audience is looking for. That's not what even myself am generally looking for all the time. Um, when I listen to something like a, like an underscore, for example, I know it's not quite EDM, but um, I, uh, I I listen specifically for the lyrics and the storyline there, and the, and the production is sort of uh, is assisting in that sense. When I listen to like a, an Elenium, for example, I don't listen for like, oh yes, this song is really speaking to me and it's third million breakup song uh, that Elenium's done or talk about love or something like that. Um, I'm more thinking for the production. And so I think the way we listen to EDM is quite different than other genres. So, um, But I yeah, sort of agree with the take.